This week, we're going to talk about collisions. And let me give you a real technical definition of collisions. When things crash into, into each other. Now, if you envision a crash, it might be a big violent thing, multiple parts all banging into each other. Of course, in physics, we have to keep it simple, especially when we're first learning physics. So we'll just think about one mass M1 that is headed for another mass M2. And they might both be moving. Maybe this one has V1 naught, and this one has V2 naught. Those are on a collision course, you would say. But to get started, we just do our problems in one dimension. One dimension, two masses. So, let's, a few bullets about collisions. Is during <coughs> the collision, um, the masses feel impulsive forces. So just like the impulses we described last time, F some average force for a short amount of time, but they feel impulsive forces that are internal to the isolated system. So we're going to think of this as an isolated system. So we aren't going to think about any external impulses. We're just going to think about internal impulses. So since they are internal, momentum is conserved. So we know, since we're going to do these problems with momentum, it's the case that we don't really have to think about the exact force versus time. That's how we just lump the average force with the time it applies and just call it the, the impulse. How much do we change the momentum? Um, right when they hit, something crazy happens, bam, oh, wow. Right, they hit each other. We aren't going to think about that. That's the impulsive part. But then after they hit, we want to think about that. So maybe. M1, V1, final. Maybe it goes back. And maybe M2, it gets knocked and it goes forward. V2, final. So the final state might look like this for the isolated system. Okay. Another thing to think about then, we have conservation of momentum. What about energy? <coughs> These had kinetic energy before the collision. They have kinetic energy after the collision. So basically we can say that kinetic energy might be conserved. It depends on what happens. It depends on all the conditions and what kind of things are crashing into each other. It depends on a lot of things. So energy might be conserved and then we call this elastic. So if it's an elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. Kinetic energy of this situation is the same as the kinetic energy of that situation. Or it might not be conserved. And that's called inelastic. So that's all those two words mean. Elastic, conserve kinetic energy. Inelastic, you don't. So we are going to solve both kinds of problems, elastic and inelastic problems, when we think about collisions.